Aha! You thought you were going to see superheroes fight to the death, didn't you? But it is I, Combo Breaker! No, I'm just here to talk about something right quick. So, I do have a Discord that I completely keep forgetting to plug into every episode, but if you check the description below, there will be a link to my Discord, where I talk to my fans, you can submit fan art for the episodes, you can, you know, see matchups before I make trailers for them, and do all sorts of other cool stuff. Honestly, I hope to see you guys in there, and now let's get on to the episode. I want to see some retired superheroes beat the ever-loving fuck out of each other. Step into my twisted world, where heroes will collide. Villains of the only evil, there are no fucking sides. Every match will test their stats, every loss and win the weight. Any chance they thought they had. Superheroes. We often see them as more than humans, as badass crime fighters, but some of them are more than just your generic crime fighter. Some are symbols of peace and justice. But even the mightiest of heroes are mortals, and will eventually become old farts. Yeah, you know me, I can't stay poetic for nearly that long. I'm surprised I made it through that fucking intro. Well, that's enough dramatic intros for today. Let's go ahead and introduce today's fighters. Mr. Incredible, Pixar's incredibly strong bruiser and hero of Disney. And All Might, the wielder of one for all and the symbol of peace and justice. Ah yes, the world of My Hero Academia. It's an odd one for sure. Unlike something like the X-Men where mutants are freaks and outcasts, most of the population in the world of My Hero Academia has a superpower of some sort referred to as a quirk. These quirks range from the practical like super strength, acid powers, and even ex fucking explosion based abilities. To some more strange ones, like frog powers, extending out your fingers a few inches, or popping purple balls off your head to throw them at people. Yeah, this show's fucking weird, but I love it so much. But we aren't here to talk about any of those fucking weird superpowers. We're gonna talk about the number one hero and symbol of peace, All Might. All Might's quirk is the super powerful one for all quirk. This is a superpower that can be passed down from generation to generation by having the next fielder eat some of the current user's DNA. Not, no, no, not like that, not like that. Although, then again, that is DNA, and then All Might did get his quirk from his previous master, who was a girl. So that must mean... Oh, oh my god! Uh, anyway, the DNA is typically something like a hair. And with every new hero that gains this power, the quirk only gets stronger. Well, that's enough background information. Let's actually talk about All Might and what he can do. And actually, for one of the strongest heroes in the series, he's really not all that complicated. All Might's one for all quirk grants him immense strength, allowing him to do the best tactic in fighting history. Punching his opponent really hard over and over again. You tell me one time that strategy hasn't worked. Yeah, All Might's techniques may be basic, but they're powerful and effective. For one, All Might can jump incredible heights and propel himself through the air using, well, wind pressure. This allows him to do some sort of pseudo-flying move. Although it's more just jumping and falling with style. On top of this, he can launch blasts of pressurized air at it to attack his foes from afar. I know that sounds kind of weird, but yes, he can essentially launch pressurized air blasts with his punches to attack you from anywhere. He's essentially an aerosol can of death. Now before we get into All Might's special techniques, there is another part of him we need to mention. All Might isn't just a super powerful unit of a man. Since his first fight with All For One, he did get heavily injured. So after fighting for too long in his super form, he'll actually transform back into his true form, which is this really skinny and just like skeleton-like looking dude. You wouldn't even know it's the same guy to be totally honest. Anyway, it's time to talk about All Might's techniques, and I hope you brushed up on your geography. And yes, I promise that joke will make sense in about 5 seconds. All Might has his Texas Smash, a powerful right punch that in addition to doing massive damage, creates tremendous air pressure that can launch foes far away, or even hit people that are far away as well. He can also perform the Detroit Smash, a punch similar to the Texas Smash but in a downwards at angle rather than the straight punch of the Texas Smash. This punch creates massive super powerful shockwaves that not only split the fucking clouds, but make it rain. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. He knows to perform the Missouri Smash. With this, he runs at his opponent with an open hand and runs past them, hitting him in the head at full speed. With the Carolina Smash, All Might runs towards his enemies while keeping his hands in a crossed position. He then downwards cross chops the enemy's head. Damn, that's a bit violent, man. You're gonna fucking break his skull. All Might also has the New Hampshire Smash, where All Might air blasts himself towards his enemy and smashes his massive body into them, crushing them and injuring them heavily. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on one fucking second. I can look past the fact that these attacks sound like a love child between Hulk and a geography teacher, but half of these don't even qualify as smashes. Well, you're really one to talk. You want to talk about something that doesn't qualify as a smash? Look at Super Smash Brothers. That's your favorite fucking video game, right? Well, they use swords and other weapons and laser guns and shit, and the ones who don't mostly use moves that aren't even considered smashes anyway. 
Two shit, wait one fucking second. I thought you were a one-time gag for the Mask of Terror. How the hell did you get back here? Oh shit, I'm fading out of existence again. Stay dead this time. God, the joke wasn't even funny that one episode. And that is time it actually made sense. Anyway, we have more of All Might's techniques to cover. With the Oklahoma Smash, All Might has his opponents grab him before spinning at ridiculous speeds, launching them incredibly far away like a tornado. Although I don't think this one's gonna have the enemies land in Oz. Although that makes for quite the interesting special move. Imagine you know a fucking fight, someone grabs onto you and just whoosh, throw him into Oz. That ain't coming back from that one. But if all those techniques are enough, he can channel the full power of America, fuck yeah! With the United States of Smash. With this technique, All Might channels all of his super strength into one super powerful punch downwards. This essentially obliterates his foes, leaving, well, no way that they're getting the fuck back up. However, this move is a last resort, and it's not something he'll just randomly throw out in a fight, especially since it takes a lot out of the guy. Wait a fucking second, I just realized something. This show takes place in Japan. The characters are Japanese. So why the fuck are these attacks named after the fucking United States? Who the fuck named these things? Okay, well, I guess now on defeats, and All Might's actually super impressive. With his Detroit Smash, he was able to beat a sludge monster and turn a sunny day into a rainstorm. He managed to stop a colossal steel cube with nothing but a punch. Not to mention, he was able to fight both Deku and Bakugo at the same time, while wearing weights to restrain him. Yeah. He also managed to take down and beat a Nova whose power was to negate impacts. And he managed to launch him through the roof of the USJ. Plus, he took down and even punched straight through the attacks of One for All who is essentially his equal. All Might's super fast too, as he's fast enough to jump long distances in seconds. He can keep up with Bakugo and Deku at once while being restrained. Keep in mind, Bakugo and Deku have shown the speeds to keep up with some of their classmates in combat, who can dodge bullets, explosions, sound waves, lightning, acid strikes, and even lasers. All Might's also super durable. He was tough enough to trade blows with a Nomu, survive a full power blast from Bakugo's gauntlets, and he can withstand the recoil of his full power punches. He can also trade blows with one for all as well. And on top of all this, All Might is super skilled and really smart. He was able to easily figure out how to beat that Nomu whose power was shock absorption, and he managed to take on both Deku and Bakugo at once, and they're at the top of their class. On top of all this, he's also an excellent teacher and ranked the number one hero in all of Japan. That's gotta show something. However, All Might is not a perfect hero. He can only stay in his muscular form for about three hours at a time until reverting back to his super skinny weak form, and he does have a weak point on his side. But despite any danger that comes his way, he's ready to punch it again and again to save his city. And he'll do it all with a smile on his face. <laughs> Look, he's got more! <laughs> Fear not, citizens! Hope has arrived! Because I am here! The Incredibles, one of the greatest Disney movies of all time. Man, I love this movie, and with how great it was, no wonder it got an amazing sequel. I mean, it was only like 14 years later, but it was still amazing. But we aren't here to talk about how great Disney films are, instead we're here to talk about the powerhouse of the family, Mr. Incredible. So Mr. Incredible has one superpower, and that's his super strength. Yeah, that's really about it, so let's go ahead and talk about that super suit he's wearing. His suit is completely fireproof, bulletproof, and tearproof. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 how the fuck do you make a suit tearproof? That doesn't even make friggin' sense! I can accept bulletproof, and I can accept fireproof, but how do you make tearproof clothing? That's literally impossible, like, how the actual fuck? <laughs> Ugh, weird ass designs aside, we need to continue talking about Mr. Incredible. Let's see, what else does he have? He can leap great distances and punch things really, really hard. Wow, that's really it? Well, I, I guess we're moving on to feats already. Mr. Incredible was strong enough to launch the early versions of the Omnidroid with a single punch. And that version of the droid could beat Hypershock, who could make magnitude 6 earthquakes. On top of this, he later lifted the upgraded version of the Omni Droid when it tried to crush his children, and he was strong enough to lift a train, as well as throw his boss through a wall. He's fast enough to jump over buildings and keep an eye on his son Dash. He can scale the Frozone, who could freeze, him, uh, freeze a bullet in midair, and Mr. Incredible has dodged lasers from the Omni Droid and kept up with the Omni Droid as well. Keep in mind, the Omni Droid has also killed other superheroes like Gazer Beam, who can shoot lasers as well. On top of all this, Mr. Incredible has also dodged straight up lightning bolts before. Now, Mr. Incredible is also surprisingly durable. He was able to survive a bomb blast, a fall from several stories up, he took the full force of a train before stopping it, and he survived several hits from a couple versions of the Omni Droid. He was also incredibly close to lava and was completely unharmed by it. On top of all these feats of heroism, Mr. Incredible is also incredibly smart. 
<laughs> He's shown that he can come up with quick and effective strategies on the fly, like using the Omni Droid's own fist to ram straight through it. Or that time he picked up one of those spaceship thingies that were chasing down him and his family and then used it to kill another guy. Man, this movie's actually really dark. On top of all this, he has several years of crime fighting experience against several villains. Not to mention he has managed to beat several versions of the Omnidroid that were programmed with info on several heroes, including himself. And then he still managed to beat the thing. But all that being said, Mr. Incredible isn't perfect. He's getting old and has shown back problems before, and other side effects of getting old as well. I mean, in the first movie he was going through a midlife crisis, and in the second movie he can't even figure out fucking math. No matter what villain shows up though, Mr. Incredible is ready to take them down. Okay, so he can still hear you from, from the other dimension, yeah. That is freaky. Alright, our combatants are set. Which retired hero will come out on top in a fight to the death? The only thing I can do now is reassure them that things will be okay. I am here! It's gonna be alright. Just sit back and watch a brewing work! Holy shit! All Might just killed him, like in cold blood, holy fuck! Well, I should probably explain how All Might just absolutely dominates Mr. Incredible. When it came to strength and durability, Mr. Incredible has taken down and taken hits from multiple versions of the Omnidroid, and the Omnidroid has taken down multiple other superheroes like Hypershock, who could create magnitude 6 earthquakes. And to further back up his strength, he's lifted trains and fist fought several other superheroes. So Mr. Incredible is clocking in about large building levels of strength and durability. But All Might has shown far superior strength and durability. He was able to punch a sludge monster so hard it changed the weather from a sunny day to a rainstorm, who managed to shatter huge chunks of ice from Todoroki. He managed to keep up with it and overpower some of All For One's attacks, and he's shown to be superior to Deku and Bakugo even while heavily restrained. This should put All Might at at least city level, if not even higher. So All Might is far stronger and far more durable than Mr. Incredible could ever hope to be. Even if we downplayed the hell out of All Might and just put him at the same strength as Deku, which is some heavy downplay, might I add, that would still make him multi-city block, which is far above any large building feat that Mr. Incredible has ever pulled off. So what about speed? Well, Mr. Incredible is fast enough to keep up Frozone who can dodge bullets, he's dodged lasers from the Omnidroid, and he's also dodged lightning. But All Might is shown to be superior to all of Class 1A and its students, and the students in Class 1A have dodged bullets, explosions, lightning, and even fucking lasers and light-based attacks. Not to mention, All Might kept up with Deku and Bakugo at the same time while heavily restrained, further backing up the idea that he's faster than Class 1A. So All Might actually should be faster, as he is superior to other heroes who can dodge lasers, 
whereas Mr. Incredible only narrowly dodged a few lasers from the Omni Droid, and we did see him get caught by Syndrome in his zero point energy, which moves at light speed. So it's not fair to say that All Might and Mr. Incredible are even with speed. Not to mention, All Might has several cool powers and special moves, whereas Mr. Incredible just kind of punches and grabs people. Honestly, All Might had this fight in the bag quite easily, too. I mean, he had practically every fucking advantage. Looks like Mr. Incredible simply wasn't on par with All Might. Get, get it? Because his name's Bob Barr? Alright, that was just bad. I'll just symbol a piece out of here before anybody gets angry at me. Okay, okay. All Might have to stop before I smash any chances of anyone watching the rest of this episode! <laughs> Our winner is All Might. Hey! Uh, thought we lost you there! Next time on Combo Breaker! We've been talking about a lot of super goofy characters and a lot of good superheroes lately. So how about we talk about probably one of the evilest things to ever exist. Next episode will be a battle of pure evil, pure hatred. Not the goofiness that is Bowser or just the pure rage that is uh, Broly. Instead, we're going one step further, one step beyond to show what the most evil thing ever is. Wait, what do you mean I'm building up the hype for this episode too much? Yeah, I, I know, I read, I read the next match. I know what it is. It's gonna be fucking evil and awesome. Just play the trailer. Fine, I'll play the trailer, but I, I bet you I'll prove you wrong that this isn't a goofy fight. You hear the screeching of the owl. You hear the wind begin to howl. You know there's zombies on the ground. And it's terror time again. They've got you. That's right, next time we have Satan versus the Cuphead Devil. Wait a second. That's why you're telling me not to hype it up. These are pretty cartoony and goofy characters, I guess. Well, uh, next time is the Cuphead Devil versus the Satan from South Park. I don't know who the hell just labeled this as the Devil versus Satan, but they made it seem a lot less goofy and a lot more badass than it actually is. Leave your predictions in the comments down below, and make sure you join the Discord in the description below. Have a wonderful day.